We're giving birth to <laughs> beacons of hope. No, honey, oh. beacons of balance. Beacons, same thing, same thing. Beacons of balance. So, Linda, how did this come about? We started talking up at uh, at the Cal Skills. Well, we talked. I met Linda um, actually online. Yeah, because she, she is a medium but she's no longer doing readings. So we met online and then we just discovered we had very similar backgrounds, right? Yes. We both started our careers in medicine. So we both are healer teachers. And right. then we moved we moved on to other things in our lives. Right, exactly. And yeah. uh, you used to have a, a shop that dealt with- I did, yeah. 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 yeah, I went from um, being in the medical realms into- different sales positions. And then I eventually, I had a very profound experience when my mother-in-law passed away. And um, that led me to open up um, an angel shop, which had a cafe. So it was a little bit eclectic, like I am. <laughs> Plus, and I had that for 10 years. girl because you think of food just like me, because it has <laughs> some place to eat. That's right. Food for the soul. <laughs> right. So you live in um, Connecticut. Well, I'm in Connecticut. And you're in California. We're in the two in states. So anyway, so we decided to put this together. Um, it really came to me. And we've been working on it since May in, in actuality. And we have a wonderful technical angel. If it wasn't for him, Victor, we wouldn't be doing this today because I have no technical And me ability. too. I'm not that good Nothing. with it. I have to have my son help me out. We both have our mouths. <laughs> We're both creative. <laughs> and we talk over each other all the time. We'll try not to do that. We'll, we'll get better at it. That. So, Linda, why do why should people listen to us? Well, maybe we can give them a little beacon of hope. <laughs> well, I put down like, what is beacons of balance? It's about bringing balance into our lives so we could live in peace and love. We'll be talking about everyday situations from spending time with relatives that we really want, don't want to be with <laughs> to yeah. helping our child with bullying that if they're being bullied or the bullies themselves. And what I've discovered, and we've talked about this is we're really in a world of duality. This little blue marble that we call earth that we're living on is always duality. It's up, down, left, right, black, white. That's not going away. Right. And how do we get through each day? And it's about you know, balancing it out. It's either you're one side or the other. You want to just be kind of in the middle to get through. And right now, as we all know, totally this world is like this. Yeah. Everything is so crazy and chaotic. I mean, from going through what we lived through with uh, COVID to now the whole political war. Well, I was just thinking, um, in fact, I'm going to do a video on my YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel, Linda G. Comanche Psychic, that I talk we're not doing that. We're doing um, we're not talking, balancing. But um, I was just thinking about how we, even for me, who just turned 70, have lived through some horrendous times, starting with the assassination of the president. I was born after the World War II. The assassination of the president, the Bobby and then Martin Luther King and then, you know, horrible things that have taken place between COVID, 9-11, and now this. Yes. Yeah, it we had really the Vietnam. That's the psyche. Yeah, we grew up kind of the same time, you know, so it was after World War II. But I remember being in, um, I guess, kindergarten or whatever. I had a dog tag. They gave us dog tags to wear. And they used to run those videos and they would say, okay, if a bomb, you know, they would show you that. We were little kids and it's like entertainment. Oh, okay. And if something happens, you know, hide under your desk. I mean, what the hell is the desk going to do for you? Not going to do a thing. You know? But we just took it like, okay, this is what it is. But we lived through, you know, the world has lived through so many horrific things and that we do oh, get we always it. were in fear. That's the common denominator. Because I know as a little girl, I lived in fear of, you know, boom, the end of times. Exactly. Well, I think with our era, because yours and mine, you know, our parents grew up from the, you know, depression and all of that. And so they were, were very fearful. And they were all immigrants that came in and, you know, they had to survive. They stayed in their little cluster, their little group. Right. You know, and um, yeah. Except so my this mom, she was a Native American. 
Well, she was the one, yeah, and this was her land. This and was she what, was yeah. always treated like, you know, it's not your yeah. land. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so but it's yeah, about how do we obtain that balance to be able to walk through this, especially like you said, to be able to help our children to move through this? I think it's a thing of acknowledging um, in one of the lines on it is seeing our darkness and honoring our light. And then there's choices that we we're faced with, right? Because exactly. we're not all, you know, we have our dark side too, but it's balancing it out. It's balancing it out. And I believe we're all here to see, to bring out the light in each of us, to uplift each of us. Yeah. You know, rather than stepping on each other. And right now we're living in such, you know, at least the US is such a materialistic world. It's like the more we could get and we want to hold on to and what is enough. And going back to what we grew up in, in the period of time we grew up in, we didn't have the technology, right? We right. had what the six o'clock news, you know, Walter Cronkite. Right. And you had to wait all day till your parents heard that. Then it you wasn't get on us like this. Yeah. yeah. You got your daily newspaper. Exactly. Or you had the radio and that was it. But now that it's like in more than instantaneous right and it's even, too much we're in too much overload and even today on um <clears throat> msnbc i had to turn i've been watching laura on hardy reruns and laughing my pachikas off but they're pulling it out to such an extent they just don't want anyone to be happy or to smile again it's just terrible and they want you to get the full the full hit of what's going on, but then they're making money off of it. That's what upsets me. It's sensationalism. Yeah. And the bottom line for everything, Linda, right? It's this. It's money. That's not what it should be about or what it is, but it is. And it's horrible. So that's where we have to learn how to balance, balance it, bring joy back into our life, bring the peace back into our life, bring the light in. And um, even though you could be in horrific situations, it's finding that piece of joy or that light to, to change it. But define joy to me, your definition of joy. Our, my definition of joy? It could be from the very simplistic thing, just being outside and seeing the sunshine and see the clouds go by. That makes me happy. Is that right? joy or is that being present? I think it's a combination. It's yeah. being present and then that brings you joy. <laughs> yeah, because I think the last- Although there's different days where different things bring you joy. Sometimes I like going to TJ Maxx and that brings me joy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? I... <laughs> but um, I am more joyful than I've ever been in my whole life. I don't know if cancer brought me there, or, but I am more joyful. Well, something like that makes you appreciate right? What you have yes. and the people around you. I think with all this technology and everything, and what I've seen, you know, the families were such at a disconnect. We've become disconnected. Again, going back to growing up, and I'm sure you had the same thing with the family unit. We were always together with our cousins, right. aunts and uncles. It was we sat around. down for meals together. It was food. We always, yeah. I don't know, I guess back then the food, yeah, it was hard at times, but we always had joined people together. Um, and and we also, got you think there them. was only one TV in the house. Yeah. And then the, I remember as a child loving to sit down to watch Ed Sullivan or shows like that with my parents. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And we had the radio. I mean, I remember back where it was the radio. I you don't know, remember I mean, the TV, radio. But, yeah. Yeah. We had the, well, my parents, because they grew up with that, they had the radio on all the time. So, um, and this is basically what it is, is going back. The podcast is, it's radio. Going it's back listening. to radio. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's listening. So anyway, so going back, we're going to hit on different topics, right? And so we're why willing to take because... ideas for topics too from our listeners. Yes, we want to hear from our listeners to what they would like to hear about. So to write in questions or what different things they would, yeah, different topics and that. But we'll be hitting different topics and um, we're planning to do weekly, right? Yeah, right. And um and only 30, also, 30 minutes, maybe a little more, but yeah, we could talk fast, Yes, <laughs> but also yes. we'll be bring, on certain topics. We'll be bringing in guest speakers. So we're excited yes. about that. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Me too. And, um, so our goal for this is to inspire and empower our listeners to see the light inside, 
to at least see the light inside of you to help you make choices for the best possible outcome in situations you're faced with in this world of duality. Exactly. Right? That's wonderful. Yeah. I read something today. I just want to share with somebody. This is by a person. It was from her site. Her name is uh, Rita French and somebody else had sent it to me, but <clears throat> this hit home to me. When a flashlight grows dim or quits working, do you just throw it out? Of course not. You change the batteries. When a person messes up or finds themselves in a dark place, do you cast them aside? Of course not. You help them change their batteries. Some need an AA, attention and affection. Some need a triple A, attention, affection, and acceptance. Some need a C, compassion. Some need a D, which is direction. And if they still don't seem to shine, simply sit with them and quietly shine your light. And I believe that's what we're here to do, to you know, shine our light on each other, to see the light in each other and lift each other up. I mean, that brings me back to, um, I did at one point volunteer at hospice and, um, you know, I sat with, with the patients, the ones that were getting ready to cross over. And I really had to keep this sealed. Oh, it's very hard. <laughs> you go, mm, and you gave them the opportunity and you just sat there and you listened. And That's you all you know. can do because you can't really be. I worked hospice for a while. One of my mm -hmm. first jobs was working hospice in people's homes and helping them transcend. But it's their deal. It's their death. You can't, unless they ask for your help, you really can't interrupt. Mm -hmm. And at time, you know, then I had, you know, a couple I got really close to and they wanted to know about my life. And that that's when you share little bits and pieces and morsels, you know, it's a very sacred place. I said, this world would be a different place. I think you would agree with me. This world would be a different place if people sat with or were, was in the presence of babies being born and people that are crossing over because you could feel the the realms open up, right? You could. Well, back in that. the 1800s, you, babies were born in homes and people would die and be put in the parlor. Death was all around them. Yeah. As in this century, we're like, oh, no, no, we can't, you know, as a nurse, we're, we're, in the we're ER. afraid of it. We're afraid yeah, of it. The, as a nurse who worked in the ER, I was told a couple of times I would be talking about something that happened. And, you know, please don't talk about that because, you know, it's life oh. and we don't like to deal with life. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. My, when my hard. mother was in a nursing home, she was getting ready to transition. I spoke to one of the nurses and said, could you speak with my sister to help her come to terms with, you know, and she said, oh, she goes, I can't do that. She, she said, there's people, nurses here that can't deal with it. And I go, excuse me? <laughs> the heck of a place to not be able to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I've had the privilege of being with people crossing over. Thank I could be you. in that space. I know some people can't um, to help people usher them across, including my own mother. I was there with her, you know, my sister yeah. and I. Yeah. So that's what this will be about. And hopefully we'll have a lot of listeners. Right? Hopefully. hopefully <laughs> if, we can, if we can hand them that key. Here's the key to peace. Yes. Because there's a lot of real light, great light workers out there. And some of them might not need our help or anything, but they sure as heck would enjoy listening to other people's plights and how people got through things. Yes. Because a lot, you know, on this path that we're, we're all on our journeys, you know, many times we think it's just us, you know, no one else has experienced this. This isn't going, you know what? Every aspect of everything in this world be it all the addictions and everything, every family unit has it in it. Right. You know, the uncles, cousins, whatever. But if you sit and reflect about it, we each have it. And it's how do you handle that? You know, exactly. how, how do you handle it to get through? I loved Mother Teresa, you know, I thought she was a wonderful soul, very, you know, just giving, giving. And she had a, you know, news reporters went over there and I remember seeing it on TV. And usually news reporters don't emote, but these people, you could see in their face, you could see their eyes, what they witnessed with her. And before they left, they said, what could we do when we go back to the U.S. to help you? And she looked at them and she said, forget me, forget what you've seen, go into your own family, into your own nucleus and heal that. If you cannot do that, 
you cannot do anything for anyone else and there'll never be world peace. Well, I'm, getting chills, I'm getting chills on that. I call it the wave. Why haven't God I heard bumps. that before? That's a beautiful. I have it on a pillow actually stitched. Yes. Because, and you know what? I remember sitting there listening to that and going, wait a minute. I'm a, I think I'm a good person. You know, I, I love people. And, and I thought, yeah, I love people. I have a lot of friends and I have compassion for people, but my own nucleus of my family Look how many brothers, sisters aren't talking, cousins. That is you know, so spouses, kids, you know, one kid. You know. Sometimes the families, I mean, I I talk to women, wonderful women whose child just decided not to talk to them anymore. And that's it. Oh, I have so many. There's and so you many. have to allow freedom. You have to allow that. Yep. But as you being mothers, you're a mother, I'm a mother. And so we think. You know, as parents, well, I think especially as mothers, we want to make it easier for our children, right? Right. But we can't do it. It's their choice and their path. You, sometimes mm -hmm. you can see them heading towards that brick wall. I, I know, know, but there's... You can do about it. But from the distance, you know, you just send them light, send them love, send them light, send them love. We'll talk about this further on other episodes because I think our, the next one we're going to do when we really get into the meat of this is talk about energy, which yes. I'm excited about, and then different sub oh energy topics so on that. Powerful. We're all energy; it's all energy, and, and you um, can make your energy go brighter. Now, listen, let me tell you something else. Sometimes, as you energetically are connected to source and vibrationally, you're a grander person. You'll notice you don't feel so good. Isn't that weird? When it first comes upon you, you'll be kind of sickly. Yes. It's really weird. Well, there's also that saying, going to the dark night of the soul. <laughs> you know? And we, we, if you really want to work on yourself, you do that. But when I opened up my shop, my angel shop, and I thought, oh, I'm helping people. This is wonderful. Going and, through with your little wand. Follow, follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. And then, well, you know, and I was like, and then the rug got pulled out from under me. And I like, Bella, you know, yeah, like something would happen. I'm like, well, why did that happen? <laughs> yeah, because I'm I'm sunshine lollipops. <laughs> or in the famous words of that girl in Muriel's wedding, you can't do that to me. I'm beautiful. <laughs> I'll tell you a quick little funny haha. -ha. When I had my shop and it was a cafe. So it was a Saturday and I was walking through the tables, everybody and everybody was happy. Everybody was happy. And I thought, isn't this wonderful? And and I used to wear flowy dresses, you know, and my daughter happened to be working with me that weekend and I'm walking around and everybody's smiling at me and I'm going, oh, hello, have a great day, you know. And I said to my daughter, wow, everybody's in a great mood. And she goes, ma, I go, what? My, my dress was stuck up in my pantyhose and I was walking around with my behind out and nobody said anything. I was mortified. <laughs> I ran into the back room and I never came out until they oh all Oh my God, that's hysterical. I've had that happen once at Kaiser when I went to do a <laughs> specimen and my pantyhose got caught. I Isn't walked along awful? and I thought I could feel something cool. That's just like somebody on an airplane. Have you seen them when you come out of the bathroom, you have toilet paper? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the, but were, were they I'm laughing just... at you or were... I will like... I don't know if they were embarrassed to tell me, how, but they were kind of uh, chubby. <laughs> how, could, how could you not laugh? <laughs> yeah, that is funny. And that's the whole thing. We have to learn how to laugh at ourselves. Yes. You can't take yourself so seriously. <laughs> right, right. And you know? I know I have an ego, I, I admit, but uh, I also pay a guy good money to go through all my comments and make sure the real rude people get blocked. Yes, well, we want to hear from all of you out there in the world. If you um, criticize, please be constructive. Yeah. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. No, it's all right. We're pretty thick skin. We've lived quite a while. So oh, my God. We, We're at that right? age now. Yeah. I've been there back and around a few times. I had some <laughs> friends up that visited from Utah to yesterday. I totally, I, I, I was like, whoa, okay, well, let's go run around and we got to chit chat and um, his son had died accidentally and uh, they were at the funeral and they knew this they grew up there that when this lady was a little girl she knew the person that started this mortuary 
And the, one of the guys came up, not the guy she knew, but another one and said, you know, you really should just allow the mother and her daughters to go up front. He's the father. So please don't stand in line. What? She was so upset that this guy was so rude. He's the biological father. Plus he paid for half the funeral. But that shouldn't mean anything. But still. This is what I'm talking she, about. Family. See what they she do. She was going to complain to the management and say that was really uncalled for. And her sister said, drop it. And she listened to her sister. Oh, hell no. You know, I would have been causing stuff right away. Yeah. Yeah. But a couple of stories she told me, I'm like, wait a second, you allowed that to roll? When I was younger, I was sweet like that, but I'm not sweet like I used to be anymore. <laughs> no, that's not true. You know what it is, especially as women, what's very empowering is learning to say no. Definitely. Never, women don't like to say no. We sure don't, except when you get older, let me tell you. Nothing like age. That's the good news about age, because I got no problem saying no now. I and I say it, mm -hmm. oh, hell no. That's but why we get along. I can't say no to my kids. But my kids don't try to run me down. They don't take advantage. They're very sweet and very considerate, you know. Well, that's when my son, when I was younger and, uh, you know, uh, he was 9'1". My other son was 10'1". So I was carrying some oh. extra, extra meat on me and I'd walk around the house. Mommy's fat. Mommy's so fat, I'd all disgusted. And one day, my little Jacob, he was about four years old. I'll never forget. He looked up at me and said, Mommy, you're fat, huh? I said, you, how could you say that? How could you call your mommy fat? And I could see his eyes moving like, oh, no, what do I do now? And he was like in total shock because I'd been calling myself fat, right? So he's just repeating what I said. He said, yeah. Mommy, you're not fat. You just got a whole lot of food stuck in you, huh? <laughs> he honest to God said that. That is so cute. That is so sweet. And I we're course, not fat, I, we're just being the it. nurturing mother I am, I said, shut up and go make me a sandwich. <laughs> we're not fat, we're just fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we should wrap up, right? Jesus, girl, walking. the time has flown by. Just I know. Just a little amount of time we're chit-chatting. Can you imagine when we get this baby on the road and we're moving forward? I know. Okay, next time we're just going to bang it out. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you've been doing most of the work. I'm so sorry because I've been so busy. And I had No, surgery. that's all right. But Don't uh, worry. I'll get once we work. get our subject matters, I can be able to come up with some ideas. Of course we will. Well, the important thing, again, is to subscribe i'm gonna point my finger down here because there'll be a link we're right. gonna be on all various platforms wonderful angel victor will be doing that for us yay victor uh <laughs> yeah, remember okay. and and arlene this is beautiful she says remember to be the change you want to see i really love that remember to be the change you want to see that's what we're ending with and from our hearts our hearts to yours in balance, love, and peace. I don't know if I could do this. No, I'll let my nose. <laughs> and, and wish and wish me some Gerard Butler. Well, we'll hey, we'll bring him on. Gerard Butler, if you're out there and listening. Yeah, if your management's listening, please bring him up because I've got some questions. I've got some techniques for him in his octane. Okay. <laughs> we're we're gonna we're mm, that's why okay. your listeners have to listen. We're going to have some stars on here. We're going to have some some big people. I mean, big people. Big people. That's right. So, so listen. 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 Watch, see. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you guys. Don't Love forget you, my about friend. your comments. Thank you so much. You too, honey. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.